Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to add automation tests to your Swift iOS app. So you're going to want to make sure that tick box include tests is checked, otherwise tests won't be included and you'll have to manually add them, which you could do anyway if you had an existing application, but this is the easiest way to get going. You're going to want to add some of your content. So I've got my um, content view here, it's going to have a button that increases a counter. And I'm also going to show you how to test logic that might exist outside of the UI. So I'm going to create a um, Swift file called test functions and it's going to have a couple of very simple algorithms that I want to do some unit tests for. With your Swift tests, it's going to give you two projects. So you got the um, you've got one for unit tests and one for the UI tests. So yeah, this is my UI that I'm going to test here that I'm showing you now. It's got a label with zero and a button that will increase the counter. And when it is pressed, it'll go one, two, three, four, so on and so forth. So this is my unit test here. And a unit test basically is just going to test the logic. It's not going to test the UI. So it can test like more isolated things. And it's um, usually pretty fast to run. So that's one of the advantages of a unit test. I'm going to test my um, is even function. I'm going to test whether my even number is true, which should be true. And I'm going to call is even with an even number. Cool. Another thing that I'd want to test is whether an odd number would actually return true as well. Uh, sorry, false, because I want to make sure that my logic handles odd numbers as well. So I'll pass in an odd number into this is even function. You can do um, set up and um, tear down inside the code, but there's nothing I really need to set up or tear down inside this unit test. And I'm also going to do a performance test. So you can do a performance test and it'll measure the performance of the code inside the self.measure block. So I'm going to call my Fibonacci recursive function, which if you know anything about re Fibonacci recursive function, it's actually exponential time complexity, which means as you increase the parameter input to it, it's going to like exponentially increase the time that it takes to run. So with the input of one, it's going to be very quick to run. But with um, higher inputs, it's going to get slower and slower and slower. So I'm just using that as an um, example of how to test it and show a performance difference. You're going to want to set a baseline once you're happy with the baseline. And like in a reality, I wouldn't adjust the actual parameter I was testing with. I would It would be more to ensure that if someone added to my Fibonacci recursive function, it didn't perform any regression, uh, cause any regression issues. Just running to make sure all the tests are passed and they have. So now that I've got my test passing and I've got a baseline set for the um, Fibonacci, you can see it there. I could edit it as if I wanted to as well, or I could accept a changed result. Now I'm going to change the value of Fibonacci recursive, and I'm going to run it. It's going to take a long time, so I'm going to skip over the running of it a bit. Um, but it's basically, I'm using this to emulate a long running um, test so that I can show you that there's been a change so you see when it stops, it's actually failed. And if I were to click on it, it just tells me that it's however much percentage worse than what was baselined. And I think anything over 10% is a test failure. So now I'm inside my UI tests um, and I'm going to show you how to add some logic to test like the button press and check the values of the labels. So if you try to do this app.launch of your XC UI application inside your unit test, it'll probably fail because it's not configured 
to allow that. Um, and it's good to keep your sort of test types sort of separate, just good separation of concerns. So the first step, what I've done is I'm looking for all the static text, which is just like that label text, which had zero in it. And I'm just finding the first one because there's only one on screen, but you can also use the accessibility label to do this sort of thing. And I'm just going to check that the value is currently zero. It should be when that first launches as that's the initial value for the state variable. Now I'm going to go ahead and find the increase button. So I'm going to find this, I'm going to show you how to find it using like a query. So I can query it using the text that is on that button, which is increase counter. So once I've found that button, I can go ahead and do a tap with that. And what that's going to do is it's going to increase my counter and now I can test that the label text has changed to one because there has been a tap. So that would increase the value of that counter state variable. And just down the bottom there, it is measuring the performance of um, my app launch. So when it does it, it actually does it multiple times. I think it might be 10 times. And you can see how it flipped on the side there and um, showed um, different colors. That's it testing different orientations. Um, and that's the final test I'll show you in a second. So I'm going to just set my baseline to be that. And that will warn me if I have any changes that cause it to take a long time to launch my app, which might deter people from using my app. So I've got this other code here, and this basically takes a screenshot on launch. It can be used for verifying if things fail. So you might want to be like, okay, so something's failed and I don't know what the app looked like at that time. It can be useful to look back at and see why things are different to what you expected. And so that's what that is for. And I'm just showing you how to find the screenshots here now. So you're going to go to your um, your test that uses the screenshots. And if you have set it to keep always, then you should be able to find the screenshot. You can see that there's one down here and I can just open it and it'll show me the screenshot. You can see that it's also shown the dark ones that were um, coming up when it was running all the different tests through. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial today. If you have, please like and subscribe for more content. All my code will be available on GitHub.